Right, we are recording. Everything is up and running. Uh, welcome to everybody joining us today. Um, while you're joining and while we wait for others to join, those of you who've, who've joined me on Thursdays before, you know, I like to give a few minutes for folks to join. Uh, welcome to answer the questions in the chat. Uh, what region are you joining us from? What do you do with WordPress? And what is your favorite thing about WordPress? Um, I've got the music playing, so you can listen to some music. I'll try to remember to turn it off before we get started. Um, and we've got Alvaro joining us today. He's a, he's a new co-host. Um, Catherine and, and Rob weren't available, so I reached out to some colleagues and Alvaro was available to help us, so that's great. Um, <clears throat> I, see some, I see some some known faces and I see some new faces, so welcome everybody. Um, I look forward to chatting about block locking with you all today. One of the biggest struggles I have is where to where to um, position the Zoom video feeds because inevitably wherever I put them, they get in the way at some point. <laughs> so I'm constantly having to move them around. It does happen, yeah. <laughs> Anthony says, "Hey, I'm zooming in from New York metropolitan area. Welcome, Anthony." One of the things I like about WordPress is how relatively easy it is to get started. Yes, that's one of my favorite things about WordPress as well. Um, and welcome from New York. That's that's a city I've never been to and I'd love to go to sometime. <clears throat> Hi, Julie from Montana. I love the ability that WordPress has to be easily customizable and create an intuitive interface for our clients. That's cool. Hi, Arta. Welcome back from Germany. Awesome. Okay, so I think I think we can get started. Um, Colonial Beach, Virginia. Don't ask. It's a small town. Okay, I won't ask. <laughs> <laughs> Islander. Um, hello from Seattle. Hello, Roy. Hello from Canada. Uh, Ottawa in Canada. Welcome, everybody. Um, Gene, welcome. My goal is to design full-site editing sites for clients. Awesome. Uh, I, uh, oh, I, see a, I, see a, I see a name that I recognize. Welcome, Elson. Elson, <laughs> um, I think, is from your part of the world, Alvaro. I think he's also from Spain, if I'm not mistaken. Um, All right. I think. I think so, yes. Um, Portugal. Portugal. Oh, sorry, man. For some, for some reason, I thought he was from Spain. I don't know. It's a, the better version of Spain. <laughs> The improved version. <laughs> so Elson is a Elson is a, a codable expert that I that used to be one of my codable colleagues when we when we used to work together when I was a freelancer at Codable. And it makes me super nervous when I know there's a codable expert on board because they're all super intelligent people and why are they why are they coming to learn here? <laughs> uh, okay, um, I think we can get started. Um, you know, five minutes seems a bit too long to kind of hang around and wait. So again, welcome everybody. Um, awesome to have you all here with us today. Um, today, we're going to be talking about block locking. Uh, it's going to be a beginner's guide to block locking and block themes. So we're going to be focusing specifically on what block locking is and how it works in a block theme environment. Um, <clears throat> if you've never seen block locking before, hopefully today you will go away with a, with a basic understanding of how it works. Uh, before we get started, a few announcements as always. First of all, again, welcome and thanks to Alvaro for co-hosting with me today. I really do appreciate it. Um, we are presenting in focus mode, so that means Alvaro and I can see all of you, but you, sorry, you can see us, but you can't see each other. Uh, and that's just to prevent Zoom, Zoom bombing of any kind. Um, you are welcome to ask questions uh, and you're welcome to either unmute to ask questions or post them in the chat. I don't mind either way. Um, the only thing that I do ask is that if your question doesn't specifically pertain to what I'm presenting on screen at the time, I do allow breaks for questions. Please keep the question until those breaks. However, if your question is directly related to what I'm doing on screen on time and you're not understanding something or something isn't clear, then you're welcome to stop me then and there. Uh, Zoom has a raise hand reaction that you can use, which Alvaro will be keeping an eye out for, or you can just post the question in the chat and Alvaro will keep an eye out for those as well. And so will I. Or you're welcome to just unmute and go, Jonathan, hang on, slow down, stop, whatever, and we can deal with it then and there. Um, 
So today we're going to be working with the same block course theme code that we worked on on the last block theme course that I did. So if you don't have it and you want to download it, these are the links where you can get it from. Um, you don't have to have it uh, to, to follow along. You can you know, do it later if you want to, but you can just grab these uh, this, this zip file and install it on your local WordPress if you want to. I'm just going to pop that in the chat quickly. Um, and it's just, it's a block course theme that we're using. Um, it's a base sort of theme that we're using for our, our block course theme, sorry, our block theme course that myself and my colleague Sarah are creating. So it's very simple. I'll show you what it looks like in a second. Um, as always, if I'm going too fast, please stop me and let me know. I will be posting this session to WordPress TV afterwards. Um, I usually do it on the Friday after the, after the Thursday session, but this Friday I'm off. So it'll only be next week, probably on Monday. Uh, and then if you're looking for more WordPress-focused educational content, please do visit learn.wordpress.org, where most of all of the stuff that we're working on is available. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, Linda says, I've seen block locking, but I get so confused. Don't worry, I was just as confused when I started. <laughs> um, so today, our learning outcomes for today, we want to learn about what is block locking. Um, I want to talk about the difference between block locking and disabling block settings and how that works. I'm going to show you how to use your theme JSON to disable block settings. So we're going to disable a specific setting on a specific block, and I'm going to show you what that does. Then I'm going to show you the lock blocking options in the site editor, how you can lock blocks and what that means. And then I'm going to show you once the blocks are locked, how you can prevent clients or other users from moving or removing those locked blocks. Um, and you'll notice that I'm struggling to say the words block locking and lock blocks because it's like a rhyme and it's difficult. And yeah, I, I struggle sometimes with words like that. So bear with me. Um, okay. So I'm going to grab a quick sip of coffee before we get started. <laughs> it gets worse in Spanish. Try, I'm not going to try that, Alvaro. Uh, if you want to have a love, read what Alvaro has posted in the chat. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> we say blo bloqueado instead of locked in Spanish. So block, <laughs> it would be blocked block. Block blocado. I must remember that. What brand of your coffee? You can actually see it behind me over here. Uh, it's a local brand. It's called One Cup. Um, it's just a local brand that I can buy from my from my local shop. Um, I buy it. It's it's ethically sourced. It's traceable to farmer and co-op. Uh, positive social and e e environmental impact. I don't buy it for any of those reasons. I buy it because it really tastes nice and it's well priced. Um, and it's a, a local, yeah, a local brand from Cape Town. Um, okay, <clears throat> you need a second cup then. I like it. Right, let's let's get going. So, what is block locking? So, block locking is a new feature. Let me turn the music off before we get into it. Here we go. Um, it's a new feature, <laughs> can't spell, a new feature added in WordPress version 4.5.9. Uh, uh, you can read about it in this blog, blog post here, which I'm going to uh, share with you in the chat, and then I'm going to open it up. Um, and and in, in, the, in the post where they talk about it, they talk about API definitions, and they talk about doing it in the templates, and it's, it's all very sort of code-based, and it's all very sort of technical. But then in uh, WordPress 6.0, uh, they released a block locking user interface. Uh, and I'm going to grab that link here quickly. And I'm going to show you that. Um, and what they did was, is they made it possible to actually lock the blocks in the editor. Um, and I don't, yeah, here's the link for it. I'll show you very quickly what that looks like. Um, so here's a picture of it. Just scroll. They've got a video of it. They don't have a picture. I don't think we'll show it to you in a second. But basically, they gave you the ability to actually lock the blocks in the editor. Um, so, <clears throat> so blocks can be locked at the block level. In other words, in the block.json attributes, which I will show you. And they can also be locked in the editor. Now, when you lock the block, all you are doing is you're locking the ability to remove that block from either the postal page or from the theme template or move the block around. Now we're gonna be focusing specifically on block themes today. So we're gonna be focusing on how it works in a template file. Um, so I'm gonna switch over to my WordPress install quickly if I can find it here. Oh wait, I'm in the browser already. Ha ha, silly. Um, and this is a, <clears throat> should I make sure this is the right one because I'm, I'm gonna be running two today. No, this is the wrong one. Um, so let me show you, sorry. Go away, Zoom. There. Um, so I've got two WordPress sites locally. The one I've called WordPress Dev, which is this one over here. And then the other one is called WordPress Test. Um, and I've just realized that 
I might need to zoom in on these things just now. So if you can't see the screen, let me know. Uh, I'll zoom in a little bit over here quickly. Uh, there we go. And I'll That's zoom better. in on the as well. Yeah. I always forget to do the zoom. Um, let me make it 140. And let's make this one 140. Okay. So in my WordPress site, uh, my sort of what I'm going to call the client site, um, I've got a plugin called uh, Learn Subscribe. Now, this is don't worry about what the plugin does. This is part of something I'm working on um, for for tutorials that I'm working on. But I want to show you how you can lock um, a block at the block level. So, <clears throat> if I open up, let me close this site, and I'm going to open the WordPress site that I'm working on. So, websites. There's WordPress. So open that up, and in the, let me close this down over here. This is the block.json file. So this is a file that controls how the block works. And you'll see at the attributes level, I can say lock this block. Um, and I can say, make it impossible to move this block and make it possible to remove this block. Now, this is specifically if you're a block developer. So we're not going to dive into how this works today. But basically what this does is once this block gets added to a template file, somebody can't then come, come and remove it. Um, now, this, if you're building blocks, this will be handy for you to do. Uh, but we're not talking about building blocks today. We're talking about theme development. So we're going to focus on that. But I just wanted to show you where that, where that goes. Um, so let's close this down and open up our development site. Websites, WordPress dev. OK, so what I want you to imagine with me is that we're building a theme for a client. Uh, we've got the block course theme installed. And we want to lock some blocks for this client. So the first thing that we might want to do is we might want to say, okay, I don't want this client to, for example, be able to, let me go into the editor, be able to change the font styles for the post title block. So this is my, my, my site editor. I'm going to go into templates and I'm going to go into the single post template. So this is the template that renders whenever a post is rendered. And if I click on the post title block uh, and I go to the settings, you will see that under the typography on the right here, I can change the appearance. I can make it thin, I can make it extra light, I can make it regular, medium, semi bold, bold, whatever. Okay. I want to disable that functionality. So, how would I do that? I would do that in the theme.json file. So, if we go over to that file, and those of you who have done the theme JSON workshop with me will remember what this looks like. Basically, this is a, a JavaScript object notation that allows me to do all kinds of settings and things for my block theme. In the settings area, I can set things like appearance tools and colors and all those kind of things, but I can also set things at a block level. So if I add blocks, and then I specifically say I want to work with the core post title block. And I want to set for, I can't spell, font. Oh no, sorry, let me check my notes here. Um, I can't remember how this works. Right, where are my notes? Here they are. Um, <clears throat> typography, that was what I need to set, sorry. So first I'm gonna say, I'm setting typography settings. And then I want to say font style. I want to set that false. In other words, I don't want people to be able to change the style and font weight. I want to set that to false. I don't want people to be able to change the font weight. Now, those are the two things that make up that dropdown. If I save this and I refresh the editor and I go back to the post title, you'll see that that dropdown has disappeared. It doesn't exist under typography anymore. What's also interesting is if I go into the global style setting, which is the styles button on the top right here, and I click on blocks and I go and find the post title block and I go into typography, you will also see that that drop down doesn't exist there at all. So I've disabled that setting for anywhere that the post title block could be used. Users can't change it in the global styles and they can't change it anywhere where it's being used in templates. So that is how to control settings for blocks. That's not block locking. But it's useful if you're building themes for clients and you want to disable certain things. You want to disable them, change in the color, change in the background. It gives you that level of control. Okay, so I'm going to stop there for a second. If anybody has questions about how you know how this whole thing of disabling settings and and, and that works, while I grab a sip of coffee, if you've got any questions, let us know, and then we will move on to how we lock blocks.
Jane just join us. Hello. Oh. <laughs> No questions for now. No questions. Awesome. I think we can move on. Great. So as we said, block settings, they can be enabled or disabled in the theme JSON in the settings area. Um, Linda, I'll come to your second question in a second. And they can apply to all instances of that block across the entire theme. So wherever the block is being used, the settings that I enable or disable will be applied. Um, Linda says, so in this example, the client can still use the color setting. Yes. So for example, if I wanted to disable the color setting, then I would, in this core post title um, area, I could then say something like color settings, and I want to disable maybe the custom color settings. So I would change custom to false. And maybe I want to also disable the custom duotone. I could make that false as well. So it gives me full control. Um, the other cool thing you can do is you can enable settings globally and then disable settings per block. So you could say, I want to enable all font style and weights, or disable it globally, and then per block enable or disable it. So it gives you quite a level of control um, of, of how things work. Um, I do recommend if you haven't seen it, I did a workshop, I think it was last week on how theme JSON works. Uh, so go and have a look at that and that'll give you some, some introductions on how that works. But it basically gives you the option to enable or disable settings specifically to, to how the blocks work. Okay, so that is how we can disable and disable settings. Now let's talk about block locking, okay? So block locking can be enabled or disabled in the editor. So it's great. We don't have to worry about writing theme JSON code. We can do it from the editor. Block locking only applies to the blocks that have been locked. And I'll show you what I mean by that when we actually go and lock some blocks. And currently the locking settings only support either disabling or enabling the, the ability to remove the block from the template or move it around or a combination of both. Those are the available settings. There may be some additional settings later on, like maybe you can lock different things, but for now, those are the two options available. So let's go back to our editor and we're on the post single page. If I'm not mistaken, let me just move this. Yes, we are on single post. So now I want to do some locking. Now, one of the cool things that I wanna show you today that I don't think I've covered in previous sessions is the list view in the editor. So what the list view does is it gives you an overview on the left-hand side of all the different blocks that are being used in your template. And it's a great way to kind of see the hierarchy of the templates. So in other words, in this template, I have a header template part that's being used, which has a group inside of it, which has a row, which there's a site title and navigation. Then I have another group block with another group block with the post title, post featured image and a separator. Then I have a spacer block, the post content, another spacer and another group, which contains some more. And I can get a good overview of how everything fits together. The other thing that I like about the sidebar, the, the list view, is I can enable settings for the blocks from the list view. So I can enable them not only from the editor view by clicking on the options and then working with the settings here, but in the list view, I can also click on the options and the same list of settings pops up. So it gives me a nice set of options for when I'm working with blocks. So let's talk about locking. Let's say that I want to lock the post title, the post featured image and the separator block in the top level group. And I don't mm -hmm. want folks to be able to remove them and I don't want folks to be able to move them around. You might think that you could just do that by locking the group block, but all that does is that locks the group block from being removed or moved around. Folks could still remove or move the post title, the post featured image or the separator. So if I wanted to block that whole thing, I need to lock them all individually. So I'm gonna start with the group and I'm gonna work my way down. So I click on my options. I click on the little lock icon and then I can select and I can say either lock all or just disable movement, just disable removal, or both. And you'll see when both happens, it's the same as local. So those are the options that I can set. And you'll see when I apply this, this group lock is now locked and the option to remove it has disappeared from the list. And if I click on the group block, the, the buttons that allow me to move it up and down have disappeared. Let me show you what those look like. So let's unlock it. So there's the remove, let's come back. And when I click on the group in the editor, there are the move up and down buttons. So I'm switching them on and switching them off effectively. So let's lock it again. But you'll see if I click on the post title, the move buttons are still there and the option to remove it is still there. So I want to lock everything down. So now I need to go individually and I need to lock those 
and I need to, I'm going to just do this from different places so you can see how it all works the same. And I'm also going to lock down the separator. Okay. Now that's all locked and that's all well and good. But the problem is if I have a look at these things, I can't move them around, which is not great for me. So I'm first going to do all my design and then I'm going to lock them down right at the end. Okay. So I'm going to stop there for a second, grab another sip of, of coffee, and allow us see if there's anybody who's got a question. Uh, and then if we don't have a question, then we'll move on to how do we actually implement this for our clients. Somebody said to me last week, it was Ross, after last week's session, he said, I love the fact that you think having a sip of coffee slows you down. <laughs> <laughs> but it forces me to take a break um, and allow for questions. And Linda has asked the relevant question. But at this point, you can still unlock them, right? Yes, Linda, I can. <laughs> so that's the thing. So if we think about user roles, administrator level users are the users that have the ability to install and uninstall themes, which also means they have the ability to edit themes. So if I'm giving this theme over to a client and I want them to be able to edit the template in the theme, but not move the locked blocks, I'm going to have to give them administrator privileges, which means they can still do the unlocking, which is not ideal. So how do we fix that? At the moment, the way we fix that, and I'm going to find the, I think it's in this post. Yes. At the moment, in this post that I, that I, that I linked earlier in the chat, where the... Um, uh, it was titled Block Locking Settings in WordPress 6.0. So this is a brand new setting in WordPress 6.0. There's a can lock block setting. And what you do is in your functions.php of your theme, and this is if you're doing block themes, this might be one of the first times you write some code in your functions.php. You use that setting to disable the ability for specific users to unlock the blocks. Now, you might wonder why is this in code and why is this not a setting somewhere? Well, the reason for that is the setting would probably be available to the user as well. Um, so if you have it as a setting, they might be able to do that setting and then and then make the changes they need to. What I think might, and there is a there is a GitHub issue that I've actually linked to. If you have a look at the link vault in the slides, which I will share um, after this call. Oh no, it isn't here, I'll find it. There's actually a GitHub issue where they're talking about some of the changes that are coming to that whole process. And they want to allow more fine-grained control over who can lock and unlock things. But for now, the way to do it is to use the can block block setting. So this code is a very good example of what we can do. I'm going to copy this code out now here. I'm going to switch over to my editor. And I'm going to open the functions.php file of this theme. And I'm just going to paste this code down. And we're going to go through what it does. If you want to copy it from that um, blog post as well, you're, you're welcome to. Um, but this is what we do. So it's basically starting at the top here. Uh, it's adding a filter. If you don't know what a filter is, um, I did do a workshop and a tutorial on WordPress filter hooks. Um, I highly recommend watching that tutorial. Basically, filter hooks are a way that you can interact with WordPress code and you can make changes to settings in the code execution. So the filter that we're hooking into is this block editor settings all filter. And what that filters is an array called settings, and it contains all the settings for the block editor. And the one of the settings available to us is can lock blocks. Uh, yes, Linda, finally a use for PHP block things. Um, so you'll see the first thing that's being done is it's saying allow for the editor role and above. Now I want to change that. I only want to allow it for um, administrators. So to allow it for administrators only, I've actually um, got this code in a, in, a, in a guest in GitHub, which I will quickly share with you in the chat. Um, and you basically do this check here. You say settings can lock blocks is equal to the result of current user can install themes. So let's talk about that. Uh, let's go back. To, let me just actually copy this out here and put it in Visual Code Studio because that's a bit too small. Um, and we'll do it over here. So the current user can function is a function that checks, can the current user perform this action? Um, and you'll see this article here about roles and capabilities. If you've never read about roles and capabilities, you can go read up about that. I highly recommend it. Um, but basically, the, the, the capability to install themes is something that only administrators can do. 
unless you create a custom role. But by default, only administrators can install themes. So that line of code basically says, change the can lock block setting to the result of whether the current user can install themes, which will be either a true or a false. So if it's an administrator, it will return true and it will allow all administrators to lock and unlock blocks. If it's any other user type that cannot install themes, it will be false and they will not be able to lock and unlock blocks. Then the next section of code gets the current user object. So in other words, the person that's logged in. And it checks against their email whether, they, whether they're in an array of email addresses against that. So in this case, if there's a user with the email address user at example.com, it will set can lock blocks to false, which is what we want. So we want specific users to not be able to lock or unlock blocks. So now that we know this knowledge, we think, okay, well, what is our user's email address? I'm going to go over to my client site, which is this WordPress.test. And I'm going to show you I have two users. The one is myself. I'm the, you know, I'm the person who set up the site for the client. And there is my content editor user, my client, if you will. They are administrator, and this is their email address. So I'm going to copy the email address. And I'm going to pop it into that code. So what that's going to do is it's going to say, right, any user with that email address, switch can lock blocks off. And that's all I need. You can also disable it for posts or pages. That's entirely up to you. For now, I'm just going to take this code out because we, we want to just keep it super, super simple. Uh, because I might have different settings that control how posts and pages work. And the, the blocks that I'm locking, you wouldn't be able to change on posts or pages anyway, because it's a template. It's a theme template file. Okay. I'm going to take another break here. Leave the code on screen if folks want to see it. I'm actually just going to zoom in one time so that it's a bit bigger and see if there are any questions. If they're not, then we will move on. Okay, there don't seem to be any questions for now, which is great. Um, so just as a review, I've left the post title settings as we would done them. So I've disabled font style and I've disabled font weight because that's the setting we want to see. I leave the functions.php there because I don't want those users to be able to edit things. The cool thing about this is that I'm not going to be that user. So while I'm working, it's not going to affect me. But as soon as I install it on my client site, it will take into effect. <clears throat> now, obviously, I've now built this, I've, you know, I would have done all kinds of other things, and I would have made all kinds of other changes, and I built my theme, and now I want to export it for my client. And those of you who, who, have, who have been to some of my online workshops before, you will remember there's a very cool plugin that does it for us. It's called the Create Block Theme plugin. Um, and I have linked to the WordPress TV um, video where we did a workshop on how Create Block works, Create Block Theme works. Basically, it's a uh, let me find it here a second. It's a plugin that allows me to export my changes, the original theme files, and then my changes into a separate theme. So we're going to go through that process now. So the first thing I need to do is I need to save the changes. So we hit save, and it's going to, I'm just going to move the zoom window out of the way. It says, are you ready to save? The changes that are being made are to the single post template. That's perfect. That's what I want. You'll notice it doesn't pick up the functions.php because that's separate from the block editor. So I hit save, and that's good to go. Now I need to export this for my client. So I'm going to go back to the dashboard and I'm going to go into the create block theme menu item that the plugin, the create block theme plugin installs. For me. In that option, I have a few things that I can do. The first thing that I want to do is I want to show you what happens, what the code looks like with the, the locking in place. There's two places I'm going to show it to you. The one place is in the editor and the other place is in the code. But to see it in the code, I first need to overwrite my changes. Now, depending on how you work, you might want to start with a base theme and then clone it and then work on it and overwrite it. I'm just going to overwrite this theme because I'm going to delete the changes later. But basically what overwrite does is it says save the user changes, in other words, the changes I made in the editor, as theme changes and delete all the user changes. So it's going to make the changes to my core theme. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I, I go into um, my current single template, if we look at the block group at the top here where the featured image and things are, this is what the code looks like. It's block group, post title, then it's got the featured image block, then the separated block. And you'll see there's nothing about locking there. 
But if we go back to the editor, let's actually do that quickly now and have a look at the code for the template, which is, where's it gone? Single post, there it is. And you can click on the options and you can switch on the code editor. You'll see that there in the group, there is a lock attribute and move is true and remove is true. The same for the post title, there's a lock attribute there and the same for the featured image. So that's what enables the locking, but that's only being stored on this site. I need it into my theme. And that's where create theme comes in. So to make sure that happens, let's go back to the dashboard, going to create block theme, and we'll say overwrite the current theme. And there we go, that's been done. So that's for my personal purposes while I'm developing. And if we go back there, we can see the code has changed. The group is locked, the post title is locked, the featured image is locked, and the separator is locked. Okay, so that's my current theme that I'm working on on my development site. I'm happy that it's there, it's all working. Now I want those changes for my client site. I don't want to overwrite the current one. I'm going to use the export functionality. Sorry, not the export functionality, the clone functionality. So the clone functionality takes all those changes and creates a brand new theme. And it gives me the option to give it a theme name and a description and URIs and that, which is perfect now for going to a client site or distributing to the repository. So I'm just going to call this client, I'm going to say locked theme. Uh, I'm just going to give it the name for now. I don't need to worry about the rest, but obviously you would fill those in. And I'm going to say create theme, which is perfect. And then I'm just going to store it to my, my desktop because I want to load it on my client site. So we'll go save there. And if we go over to the client site, which is this one over here, where content is in, and you'll see if you look on the top right, the content editor is the current user. So you'll see they're able to install the theme, which is great, but they can't edit the locked blocks. So if we go into appearance themes, we can send them the file, or we could do this for them. We go add new just as you would normally install a theme and you go upload the theme. And there's the client lock theme. Let me say open and install. So this obviously takes a few seconds while the files upload and does its thing. There we go. And now we wanna activate that theme. Okay, so there's the client lock theme activated. If I look at the front end, I should see that it's activated. It's got the colors that I want, that's perfect. But now as the content editor, I wanna go in and I wanna edit the single page template. And I wanna move those lock blocks around and I shouldn't be able to do that. So if we go into templates, and this is where if it goes wrong in the live demo. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So here is my post title and you can see immediately there's no move buttons. And you'll see in the options, there's no remove buttons. And the same for the featured image, no move, no remove, and the same for the separator. But the rest of the blocks, I can move them around. I can remove it if I need to. What you'll also notice is that if I click on the list view, it actually shows that the blocks are locked. So my user can see that the blocks are locked. Now, you might not want that to display. Um, and that might be a conversation that we maybe need to have with the Gutenberg development team. It, it, it seems feasible to me that you'd want the users to know this and those things are locked. Um, but you'll notice I can't, I can't click, there's no option to click on the lock to unlock it. So I'm telling my user, these things are locked, leave them as they are, I don't want you to mess with them. Um, the rest of the blocks are, are the same as they are. And literally the only way that my, I'm going to open up the WordPress one now. The only way that my client could possibly now make that change is if they have enough knowledge of the code to go into the theme files themselves. Um, and go into the template and either disable the functions.php code or in the single remove the locking functionality. The truth, now the truth of it is, if they were able to do that anyway, then they would have been able to do that with a the classic theme. They would able, be able to do what they want. Um, so it's kind of, there's no other way to prevent it from happening if they have that access. Uh, so a little trick, if you don't trust your clients to break things, don't give them FTP access to, to the files. Um, Self-hacking, yes, absolutely. But from the front end, as you can see, it is lovely. It's locked down. They can't move it around. They can't do what they want. They also can't, if we go here, now change the typography. So their settings are still there. They can't change that if they want. They can't do it from the styles interface. If we go, uh, sorry, where was it? If we go to blocks, um, post title, typography, again, they can't do it there as well. 
So the theme settings have, have carried through, which is what we want, and the locking settings have carried through, which is exactly what we want. Okay, um, so that is my bit. Um, I just want to check in my notes if there was anything else that I wanted to cover, but I think I've covered everything. Um, so are there any questions at this point in time about anything that I've covered? I see there is a question coming through. What happened? Yeah. So when, yeah. So when you override current theme and rename, will there be no original theme updates to that theme? Yes, that's exactly correct. So if I, if I, so it, it, and really it depends on your personal preference. So if you're going to start with a theme and you're going to be making lots of changes and you want to be able to say, commit those changes to, to revision control, then you would typically use the overwrite option because then you would overwrite the changes to the theme and then commit those changes to revision control. If you're happy just to design it in WordPress and just keep saving and you don't worry about revision control and then eventually you want to you want to create it for your customer, then you just need to use the clone option. Um, so it really depends on your workflow. That's the great thing about create block theme is it gives you all the different options. So whatever suits your workflow is the one that the one that you choose to use. Personally, what I like to do is I use I make some changes and then I hit overwrite because I want those changes stored to the file and I'll commit those to revision control. And then I'll make some more changes and then I'll overwrite and make some more changes and then overwrite. Um, and then eventually when I'm ready to rock and roll, ready to ship this, upload it to the repository or send it to the client, I'll use the clone option, clone it for my client, give it a separate name, separate description. If it's, if it's for a client, it'll be my URL, my author name, because it's good to put those things in your client themes trust me because then they'll know you did it for them and they'll come back to you um, or if you're if you're selling it or submitting it to the repo uh, and then they'll create the zip file ready to rock and roll with all the files we need okay any other questions uh while we are here if there's no more questions there are some additional things that i was hoping to cover so we will have time for them um so jerry says so as content editor i can also do self-hacking by creating a child theme of client lock theme Yes, that's a good question. Um, I actually don't know the, yes, you should be able to. So if you created a child theme and then you overwrote the single post template and you remove the locking, then you would be able to disable that functionality or in the functions of PHP. You, so you would need to hook into the filter after the, the parent filter because uh, I think the parent filter will still fire and then, and then do some self-hacking in the child theme. Uh, but again, if, if you're worried about your clients doing that, well, they have access to the code anyway, so they could they could self-hack it in the in the parent theme. Um, but yes, you could, and that's a cool way you could add, you could have things locked for one client, but not locked for another client. There's multiple fun things you can do. The other thing I wanted to show you in the code is let's say you have different administrator users and you want to disable and enable for some of them. So let's say I've got a couple of, of clients that I want to disable for. I can just use this code as, a, as an array, a comma separated array. Sorry, let me just do that. So I could say the user with content one and content two can't enable these blocks, but all the other users can. Um, I, could even, I could even just disable can lock blocks entirely by making this false. And then I could do something like this where I say, okay, certain users can by user level. So I'm just gonna copy out that code and I'm gonna say, let's say me. Um, as jonathanbossinger at gmail.com, which I think was my email address um, on the site. I could do that. And then I could say for this user specifically, the setting is, sorry, true. Um, so I'm saying for the one user, it's true. For the two other users, it's false. And then it's the default everywhere else. It's, it's the false everywhere else. So it gives you a nice fine, fine grain level of control. What I would love to see at some point um, is, is this in your theme JSON and your setting somewhere. Um, it would be cool to somehow set it up with the user type or by email um, in the theme JSON, just as a, you know, something like this. Um, so in the settings, you could have something like can, it's not currently there, but you could have something like can lock blocks. And you could say something like default is false. So disabled for all users and then per user true or something. I don't know how it would work. But that would be cool to do in the theme JSON settings because then it's for that theme and then you can have a different per theme. You don't have to worry about functions of PHP again. And this is spoken as a PHP developer. I just love the idea of doing it in the settings like that. Um, so I'm sure I'm sure it'll, I'm sure there will be improvements to how this work. I mean, uh, block locking was literally just released in version six, which was the last major version. So I'm looking forward to seeing, I actually want to find that, that GitHub issue quickly while I'm here. Um, so it was 
on learn it was on the ticket that i was working on to put this workshop together um i do recommend going and reading up about what they are planned there uh here we go so there was a uh here it is um multiple it's titled multi-entity permission management um and it's talking about freezing different parts and things like that i highly recommend reading this um i will i will share it in the chat and i will include it in the slides but that's kind of where folks are moving towards uh, in terms of managing all of this and site editing restricting and unrestricting and how all that works so i'm sure there's definitely going to be improvements uh, down the line okay um i'm going to move on now we've 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 covered the basics of what I wanted to talk about, but there is some additional reading I want to share with you. The first one is the Gutenberg Times website. Uh, it has a lovely article on um, the different options for disabling theme features and lock and lock blocking. Um, most of the content that I read about for this workshop, I read from there. Uh, there is also a site called fullsiteediting.com. Uh, it's a contributor called Carolina. She she writes a lot about um, full site editing block themes and all of that and she's got a section on unlocking blocks and templates um, i didn't cover templates today because templates is a little bit more advanced a little bit more php code we might do that in a future session um and then all the links about about locking blocks in wordpress which i've shared with you already so i do recommend reading those if you get a chance um awesome that's everything i have for today does anybody else have any questions before we before we wrap up a little bit earlier than usual I have one, if I may. <clears throat> I'm just, I, I'm, I've typed it out in, in, in the chat just in case. But um, as I was seeing you type out well, the values here and there, um, what came to mind was how interesting it would be to have some kind of plugin, or it could be core, but mm. it probably sounds more like plugin territory, where you could uh, specify all of those settings via a visual interface. Um, and then so, you could export it as a, as a block, like combining that with the other plan would be really cool. Mm, mm. So you're talking about in the theme JSON? Rather than having to type out things yes, in the theme yes. JSON, having some so kind of visual interface. Yeah. Yes. So as far as I know, WordPress core is not currently working on something like that, but there are quite a few theme development companies that are working on things like this. Um, there's one that is currently in alpha by the folks at WP Engine. Um, I, I, I can't remember where it is now. Let me let me see if I can find that. Um, it was, I saw it, hang on. Uh, the chap actually followed me recently. So I might be, I don't mind sharing my, my follower list with people. Um, I think it was this WP Engine Builders. Um, so the developer relations team at WP Engine, they are building something called, uh, where was it? I'm not going to find it now, am I? But basically, they were building something that allows you to, it's a plugin, um, and it allows you to, um, no, I'm not going to find it. But basically, it's a plugin. You install it in your WordPress okay. site, and it allows you to choose all your theme JSON settings from a visual interface. And then, and then you can add your templates as well. Uh, you can add your template parts. You can create everything from the interface, and then you can hit save, and it'll export it for you there. Um, there's another, there's a couple others that are doing, I think, I actually think on the full site editing site, I think Carolina might've, might've, yeah, they're called, uh, theme, the site creators, theme generators. So Carolina's got this one, um, which has some, some, some basics that you can export. Um, but I don't know if she, I think she might actually link to it. Let me just see here. Um, I need to find it. Let me just do a Google search. WP Engine Site Builder, I think it's called. Um, I, I can't think of it now. It's still it's still in alpha. But yeah, there are definitely folks in the community that are building these things, um, and that's that's what kind of excites me is the fact that we have companies that are working on these things. Thank you, uh, FSC Studio. Thank you, Stuart. Yes, that's the one. Matthew Cardens is the chap from WP Engine. It's called FSC Studio. Uh, let's see if we can Google that quickly. Thank you. Um, Thanks. Uh, is it that one? Oh, it actually looks like I had it installed at one point. Um, do I still have it installed? No, I don't. Lost. Um, 
but yes, here it is. Uh, so, so Gutenberg Times has an article about it. Um, and let's see if we can find it. Uh, uh, T Studio. They might not link through to it. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. So I just want to show you kind of what it looks like. Uh, so there you go. So it basically you you load it up, and then you can set your theme details. You can set your styles and settings, your theme patterns, your theme templates, and your template plots. And then you hit preview, and then you can hit save, and it'll generate it all for you. Um, and there's a couple of folks out there doing these kinds of things. So there's 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 a lot of work happening, which is which is super exciting. Um, so yeah, that's definitely. I, I, I actually have I have the alpha version somewhere, and I was playing with it, and it's very exciting. <laughs> um, cool. Okay, I think that's I think that's it for today. Um, I, if there are no other questions, thank you all for joining. Um, this was a very focused session, so I, I wasn't able to stretch it out to an hour, but that's fine. I think uh, for those who want to go and play with it, you're more than welcome to. That's the level of block locking at the moment. That's what you can do with it. Um, if you if you want to go and play with it, set it up on a dev site, have a, have a go at it. If you're running into any questions, as always, please do let me know. And uh, thank you everybody for joining me today. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Before we go, before we go very quickly, um, I mentioned last week, somebody asked me about doing a workshop um, on, on fonts. And I'm happy to announce that one of my uh, fellow contributors, a chap by the name of Damon Cook, he is also a, um, a developer advocate. He's actually doing a session. I want to find it quickly. Uh, he's doing a session on fonts in block themes. Um, so give me one second here. Um, I'm going to find the link and share it with you all. Here we go. So it's on meetup.com already. Uh, it's happening next week, Thursday the 15th. And it's all about choosing and using fonts in your block themes. Uh, so those of you who want to know how to use fonts, I don't have to worry about it anymore. Damon is doing it for us. Uh, so please do sign up for that. Uh, he's also in, in the States. So it's more of a States friendly uh, time zone. Um, so go and check that out. Can you share and, the, uh, the link in the chat, please? I yes, that's a good, that's a very good yeah. idea. That's a Thanks. very good idea. Let me do that. I'm asking because uh, I might join myself. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you all for coming. Again, it was lovely to have you all here and uh, go forth and lock and lock your blocks. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. Cool.